Okay, this is your really simple, really down and dirty pre-mission mm, preparation thought process. Just really quick general kind of how you should be thinking when you're preparing to put together a little team of guys and how you should structure what you guys are up to. Wolverines! We could cover pre-mission planning and op orders and official flow of information and how to build a mission uh, really in depth, really, really in depth. All the point of this video is gonna be is just like a really basic, like I've said on other ones, if I had to put together a group of four guys these are some general things that I would be concerned with. These are some general kind of thought patterns that I would use to develop what we're doing now that we're a group of friends. So this week on Reality Based, it's just the worst name ever. It's the worst name ever, but we're going with it. This week on Reality Based, we're gonna talk about Met TC, and I'm gonna talk about my personal five rules to a gunfight. So Met TC. Right out of the gate, it is an acronym, and we are gonna go over what the acronym means, but I want you to think of METTC more as a thought process. It is a way of thinking about your environment. It is a way of making decisions. If you've ever been in the military, or you've ever, uh, if, you guys, if you guys are veterans and you're watching this, you probably chuckle when I said METTC, because METTC is the answer to everything. If you're ever asked, like, why did you do what you did? METTC. So, METTC stands for Mission, Enemy, Terrain, Troops Available, Time, and Civilian Casualties. I don't care if I said the T's in a different order than you go with, that's what we're going with. So, Mission. Mission means what are we doing? What is our end goal, right? We have established that we have an end goal, an end outcome that we want to accomplish, and our mission is going to be the way in which we accomplish that. So this is why I said that we could go really, really in depth on mission planning. Just the M out of METTC is its own conversation. But for the point of this conversation, when it comes to our mission, it is simply the end goal that we wish to accomplish and how we plan to accomplish that end goal. Enemy. Enemy means or refers to any combatant that we're gonna have to deal with inside of the battle space. So think about that in a full picture. The enemy combatant is not just armed individuals, but it is also psyops conflicts inside of the environment also. So we're not just trying to win the gunfight, we're trying to win the publicity war as much as we're trying to win the comp as much as we're trying to win the gunfight. So the public support and the narrative behind what we're doing matters just as much as the actual conflict that we find ourselves in. It is very important that we handle ourselves in a battleground or in those environments as if everything we do will be televised later on somewhere else, because by and large it typically is. So hold yourself to a high standard, hold yourself accountable, understand your enemy, and understand the ability the enemy has to paint your actions negatively through their PR, through their psyops, wings of what they do. Every organization on planet Earth that is a fighting force has some sort of public relations branch that manages their public image. It is very important that you are aware of that. Terrain. Terrain matters a great deal when we're talking about mission planning because it simply means the area in which we will be con conducting operations. But like I just said, with your enemy and their PSYOP uh, abilities, their public relations abilities, your terrain should also include some sort of digital footprint in the world as well. I should be conducting map reconnaissance and I should understand the geographical outlay of the environment that I wish to operate in. But I should also understand the technological environment that I'll be operating in. If I'm inside of a major first world city, then there's a whole lot of electronic technological things that I need to consider. All of those things should be taken into our terrain point of pre-mission planning of battle space considerations. We should also be considering the fact that it is the 21st century or the 22nd century. I don't know how that works. Doesn't matter. If we're operating inside of a major city, inside of a first world country, then there's a lot of electronic and technological surveillance capabilities that we should be taking into consideration. That is really important. And I think that it goes hand in hand with your terrain is understanding your entire, the entire picture of the environment that you're in is all inside of terrain. So don't just think mountains and rivers, but think electronic and technological advantages, disadvantages, think main thoroughfares, think how um, traffic and civilian populace move inside the battle space, all good considerations when we're talking about terrain. Troops. 
Troops simply mean the guys that I have, my side of this fight. Who do I have? Do I have higher elements? Do I have additional uh, elements that can help me with what I'm doing? Am I limited to my four man resources? What are all of the resources that I have? Let's get them all out on paper. Let's think through all of the resources we have and how we can use each one of those individual resources to benefit what we're doing today. So troops, it physically means me and my buddies, but it also just means any additional resources or um, helpful assets that we can put into this fight. Time, very self-explanatory. It is the big picture time. How much time do we have before the operation? So how much time can we back plan if you know, if D-Day zero hour is the day that I go live with this operation, then how much time do I have between now and then to, um, to prep, to build a plan, to rehearse that plan, to get my guys ready to accomplish? That time consideration is gonna make a big impact on your planning, on your rehearsals, all of that. So time is pretty self-explanatory. It just refers to all of our different time standards that are gonna apply to this specific operation. The more in the weeds, the more detailed that you can become, the more that you obsess over all of these different little pieces, the better that it will all go for you. If you understand that to build a big picture of something, like to build a car, there's a million and a half little pieces that make up that car. Think about your planning the same way. We know that our end goal is to build this car. We have to figure out what each individual screw is and then where that screw goes Time is just one of those little screws to put into this bigger picture. So, time, self-explanatory, moving on. Civilian considerations, that simply means understanding the environment that you're gonna be operating in, kind of like I went over with enemy and terrain, same concept. What are the considerations inside this battle space that aren't combatants? So do I have civilians that live in this area? Where do they live? Can I conduct an operation in a way that doesn't put them inside of the line of fire? What can I do to consider the civilians that live in the area? We wanna always do everything that we can to minimize civilian casualties, but in these type of environments, sometimes it can't be helped. Specifically, if you're dealing with a combatant like Hamas or other terrorist groups that intentionally use civilians as walking, living body armor, they will hide behind civilians or embed themselves inside civilian populace or inside civilian centers like Hamas uses hospitals to house all of their leadership. They, their leadership has little like apartments inside of the hospitals. This is well known, but an enemy that it intentionally uses the civilian populace to hide, to disguise themselves or to physically hide behind inside of gunfights creates a difficult problem to solve when we're talking about civilian considerations. A good golden rule of thumb is that if you're shooting at me, I'm shooting at you, and if you happen to be in between the two of us, that sucks. But it is what it is. These environments are unforgiving, they are harsh, they should be avoided at all costs. All conflict between other human beings should be avoided at all costs, from a bar fight in the parking lot to a nuclear war. They should be avoided at all costs because they bring out the absolute worst in us, because they bring out our survival instincts, because they make us animals. And animals fight without compassion. They fight without humanity. There's my dad moment at the end of Met TC. So that's Met TC, and now five rules to a gunfight. So rule number one of a gunfight is always be sexy. Always be sexy means that you need to know your equipment, you need to know your gear, you need to obsess over all of it. If you are concerned with making sure that everything is taped and every buckle is buckled and everything is tied down and strapped and you don't have any danglies, you don't have anything that can hook on anything, and that all of your pouches, you can still access all of them no matter what other pouches are going on, you have taken your gear out and you have tested it on the flat range to make sure that everything makes sense and works the way that it's supposed to. It also applies to physical fitness and being healthy. If you look in the mirror with all of your gear on and you look good, then you care about your craft. Always being sexy just means that you are a professional at what you do and you apply yourself to the craft that you have chosen. If this is a road that you wanna go down, the amount of preparation that you put in beforehand is directly accountable to how much success you will have on the back end. Sweat saves blood. The effort that you do now will dictate the success you have later. So, always be sexy. Rule number two, be hard to kill. Being hard to kill means, again, like we talked about, obsessing over all of this stuff before the moment happens, because when the moment happens, you're not gonna have time to think, you will only have time to react. So 
your reaction plan that you have pre-thought out, pre-staged, and all of your equipment has to work immediately because this is the only opportunity you have. So, when we're talking about being hard to kill, it means always thinking through the environment that we're in, always being prepared for the environment we're in, always having contingency plans, never saying that it's gonna go to plan, never thinking that everything will go the way that it's gonna go, constantly and continuously thinking about how I can adapt and overcome, how can I make my situation better. When it comes to physically inside of that situation, then it means we're always in behind cover and concealment. We're, we're always, we are always positioning ourselves with our back against the wall. There's a, every veteran, every cop, everybody that's ever been in prison, anyone that's ever lived through high stress environments, when they sit in restaurants, they always sit in a way that they can see the majority of the restaurant, if not all of it. That is being hard to kill. Positioning yourself in ways that you are in more control of your environment, you have a bailout plan, you have covering the concealment that you can get to if you're not directly behind it. Just if, imagine, imagine that you are the enemy looking at your group of people. What will make you a hard target for that person to engage with, right? If all of us are a difficult shot, if we're all using cover and concealment, if we all look sexy and all of our gear is put together, do you even want to pick a fight with me, right? So being hard to kill isn't like a macho guy thing, it's just utilizing your environment to minimize your risk, right? That is the goal, utilize your environment to minimize your risk. Be hard to kill. Rule number three, control the tempo of the fight. Once the fight starts, your number one priority is to gain and maintain fire superiority. If you pick a fight with me, I want you to immediately and incessantly regret the mistake that you have made. The second that you start a fight with me, I wanna respond in such a gross, violent, overwhelming, extreme way that you never have an opportunity to rethink it. You never have an opportunity to change your plan. You don't have an opportunity to bail out. You pick a fight with me and you get run over like a dump truck, right? If we control the tempo of the fight, then we control the movement of our opponent. We control the psychology of our opponent. We should think about gunfight environments like a full spectrum operation, even if there's only two of us that are involved on our side. How can the two of us help each other to minimize the enemy's ability to move, to minimize their ability to think? What can we do to stack advantages on our side, even if all of these things are happening in milliseconds of, of time? I want to create an untenable environment for my enemy to be in that makes it difficult for him to make quality decisions. So control the tempo of the fight, get into it aggressively and keep the gas to the floor. Control the tempo of the fight. Number four, move or die. Inside of a gunfight environment, you should expect your enemy to be maneuvering on you. You should expect your enemy to also be trying to control the tempo of the fight, to also be standing on the gas with no break. If you are not moving onto the objective to where the contact is coming from, or moving off of the objective to get away from where the contact is coming from, then you are dying. You are either moving or you are dying. We are never static. We don't build trench lines. We are going to pick a plan of option and that's either overrunning the enemy or leaving the area. There is no middle ground. We're going to pick one of those two and we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it right now with extreme aggression. That's what we're doing. So as soon, as soon as we have an idea of where it is, what we're doing, what the plan is, which needs to happen in incredibly fast, then we're going to start executing that plan. Move or die. This also refers to the beginning of a gunfight. If I have found myself in a not ideal situation where I lack cover and concealment and something kicks off, the first thing that I need to do is seek cover and concealment and then try to develop the situation that I'm in. I have to get my feet moving and get behind something that will save my life. If I'm standing in the open, looking out into the world, trying to let my adrenaline calm down to figure out what's going on, I am a dead man. So you are moving or you are dying. Rule number five. Be violent, be willing to go the distance. This is a full send environment. If you are making the commitment to operate in this role, then this isn't the time to reevaluate your decisions. The decision to be violent must be made before you carry a concealed carry gun, before you put a four man fire team together to go fight the Ruskies. Your decision to be violent is one that needs to be made on your own, by yourself, with soul searching. There needs to be lines in the sand that you draw for yourself that should those lines be crossed, the response is nothing but sheer, unadulterated violence. Those lines should be very, very close to you. Those lines should be avoided at all costs, like I've said before in this video. But should those lines be crossed, there cannot be any wavering or any amount of 
uncertainty that goes into that decision. You should say, this is a line in the sand for me and should you cross it, you will get one reaction from me. Establish what those are and be willing to go the distance. I can't say it enough. This is a full send environment. Your mind must be made up before you are in this environment because making the decision in the environment is too slow and now you aren't moving, so you're dying. Rule number five, be violent and be willing to go the distance. Rule number six, there are no rules, start cheating. Every advantage that you can stack in your favor from physical fitness to your gear, to your weapon, to your team, to understanding your team, to rehearsals beforehand, to planning, all of it. Absolutely every single piece should be completely obsessed over. There is no rule book for what we're doing. You have decided to gamble with your life. This is a fight for your life. What are you willing to do? How far are you willing to go to make sure that you go home today? Rule number six, there's no rules here. Start cheating, stack all the advantages in your favor, and when you're done, salt the fucking earth. So that's just a really quick down and dirty kind of thought process that you should have in your head when you start to um, go down the road of mission planning and team building and you start looking at this kind of environment more than just how I'm going to respond as a concealed carrier, but how I might respond to something with a team. That team has to have a lot of knowledge that's shared between each other. You all have to be on the same page all of the time. If you can have a team that operates with minimal conversation inside of moments, meaning that everyone kind of understands what we're gonna do with uh, certain set things, like if we take contact from 12 o'clock and we know that we can fight that fight, we are going to do this. Understanding that and making sure everyone on the team has very clear understandings of their personal responsibilities, that is the way to go. And understanding METTC and having some basic guidelines for how to build your team and the thought process that you should apply into the gunfight environment, I think it's good information to put out there even though it's kind of boring. It's just graphics that I popped up with PowerPoint lettering, but you get what I'm getting. It's very important to have a mindset behind what you're doing because when you're doing it, it's very hard to be able to think at all. There's plenty of time for thinking before and there's plenty of time for thinking afterwards, but in the moments, we have to just make decisions and get things done. So, thanks for tuning in. I've got some big things coming down the pipe. We're gonna continue with the cock and load series, which is more just come hang out on the range and have fun with us. We're also gonna continue with this reality base series, and we're gonna cover even more topics. We're gonna cover basic medical, we're gonna cover basic bushwhacking skills and how to be comfortable in the field. If you can't be comfortable in the field, then all of this is for naught because living well and being in high morale affects the battle space just as much as anything else. So, we're gonna try to cover it all because Shit's getting weird out there. So anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for the support. Don't forget to check out uh, Bonfire and pick yourself up a t-shirt and be on the lookout for some, uh, some new things that I'm working on that I'm gonna try to sell you. So that's coming. I will see you guys soon. And as always, remember, it's okay to be dangerous.